Hey guys, Tim Bratz here. Appreciate you guys plugging in to the Legacy Wealth Show. Um, I got my, my friend Craig Valentine on with us today. And uh, for anybody who doesn't know Craig, um, he owns something called Early to Rise. It's actually, it's a e daily email about uh, wealth, wisdom, um, and health and prosperity. And uh, it's actually how I got started into personal development, kind of took my first steps into that back, shoot, probably 2015, 15, 16, 17 years ago. And um, Craig didn't own it at the time, but he's bought it since then. He's also an author of multiple books, uh, Perfect Day Formula is a great read, Perfect Week Formula. And he's got a Wall Street Journal bestseller called Unstoppable. So uh, Craig's been in business for over 20 years, built multiple seven-figure businesses and helps struggling entrepreneurs kind of get some clarity, discipline, strategies, um, in place on how to increase their their income their impact and their influence uh, all across the board so craig dude appreciate you being here man yeah this is gonna be a lot of fun thank you so much yeah yeah good stuff so um high level let's give everybody a little background on you and kind of uh how you started your entrepreneurial career and um where you're at today yeah i grew up on a farm up in canada and i wasn't one of those kids who did the lemonade stand i thought i you know how to get a good job and work for the company for a long long time had a falling out in that first job that I got and realized I was kind of unemployable. Along the way, I wanted actually to be a strength and conditioning coach in the National Hockey League. So I started this online fitness program and I started personal training and all that sort of stuff. And I lucked into writing for Men's Health Magazine in 2000. So I wrote for them for about 15 years, built up uh, what I call Canada's version of P90X, which was a program I called Turbulence Training. And then I bought Early to Rise in 2011 from Mark Ford, my mentor. I wrote my first book, Perfect Day Formula, in 2015. Had severe anxiety attacks in 2016, right when my business started taking off, my fitness business. And then I wrote all the other books after that. So now I work with entrepreneurs and everything from manufacturing to real estate to fitness to online businesses. And it's just a lot of fun to be able to talk to other high performing people with that same like-minded approach to life that no matter what gets thrown at them, they're going to come back stronger every day. Love it, man. Let's, uh, uh, lot to unpack, obviously. Uh, let's talk about, I mean, the thing that sticks out the most is your anxiety attack and sure. you know, business, business started taking off. Um, let's talk about that. Cause I think a lot of people struggle and they have the personal, um, you know, issues with not making enough money, but guess what? There's levels upon levels of business. And once you get to a certain level, you start making a lot of money. There's additional levels of stress and responsibility and headaches and things that come with it. Can you share a little bit more about that story? Yeah. So I was actually making the most money I ever had. I was in the best shape of my life. I had all this stuff going for me, but I didn't have any structure or boundaries in my life. And so I was working all the time. And whether you're working all the time because things are going great or you're working all the time because things are going bad, you're still working all the time. And then I was going out a lot and drinking a lot and I had social anxiety. So I was introverted and not sharing my problems with people and, you know, all that stuff really exploded up in my head. And I tell people, you got to get out of your own head. If you have anxiety, you can't hold it in, whether it's journaling, whether it's going to therapy, whether it's talking to a friend, you got to get out of your own head. Otherwise your mind races, your wheels spin and your anxiety engine revs. And all of a sudden it's going to end up in something that can be very bad. I actually went to the emergency room a couple of times because I thought I was having a heart attack twice at age 30. And so that was the lowest point for me. Fortunately, when I found out that there was nothing physically wrong with me, I realized there was a whole bunch of changes I could make to my lifestyle. And then that kind of set me down the path of building all the rituals, routines, and formulas that kind of shine through in the perfect day formula. It's about getting up a tiny bit earlier. You don't have to get up at the 5 a.m. club. That's not a good idea for most people, but just get up a little bit ahead of everybody else so that you're ahead of the day, ahead of the game, and you're ahead of everybody else so that you win. So that's just something that I had to learn the hard way. So now I've written a couple of books about it so that other people don't have to go through what I did. Let's dive into that. Um, I remember reading Early to Rise back in the, uh, what was it, mid 2000s, 2005, 2006, 2007, when I was first kind of really becoming an entrepreneur. Um, and one of the secrets of success that Mark Ford actually talked about was entrepreneurs, like the most successful people wake up early. They get up before everybody else gets up and kind of knocks out um, all those important things and some personal time for themselves. And they kind of eat the frog 
early in the day too, right? Like the, whatever the biggest responsibility is for them, they usually knock that out first thing in the morning. And that way you're setting your, yourself up for success all day. Is that, is that kind of the idea um, that you pursue as well? Yeah, absolutely. And so whether you give you know, credit to that quote to, to Mark or to Brian Tracy or to Mark Twain, it's if, you, if your job is to eat a frog, best thing to do is eat that frog first thing in the morning. If your job is to eat two frogs, best thing to do is eat the biggest frog first. And the reason why is because Daniel Pink wrote a, a book recently called When, the Scientifically Perfect Time for Doing Everything. And he says, in the morning, we have the greatest discipline, willpower, and intention. The greatest discipline, willpower, and intention. So if you wake up and you waste your morning in a long morning routine or you're working out or whatever it is, and you know you could actually make time to do that at some other time of day, you're probably procrastinating on the biggest thing. And then you're going to push that off and you're going to push that off and you're never going to get it done. So I teach people to wake up and as quickly as possible, get into their number one most important thing. I call it the farm boy morning miracle. And, you know, because I grew up on a farm and you just get up and you go to work on the farm because that's what the animals require. And mm -hmm. so it's the same with everybody in their business. And, you know, someone might be thinking, yeah, but I don't, you know, I, I got to go in the office. Well, listen, if you spend 15 minutes First thing in the morning, working on your number one priority in life. That might be getting out of debt. That might be taking advantage of an opportunity. If you do that for 15 minutes in the morning before everyone else gets up, six days a week, that's 72 hours in a year that you will get ahead of everyone. And that is the key. How do you help entrepreneurs identify what their number one priority is? How do you extract that out of them? I see a lot, you know, I do coaching and mentoring stuff too. And I see a lot of people who are like, oh, I want this or I want that. And I started going down the tunnel of why, 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 why? And, and all of a sudden they're like, I don't really know, right? I think it's because this person wants me to do it or society tells me to do it or um, whatever that is. Uh, how do you kind of extract that and figure out what is their truest priority, the most important thing to them and, uh, and identify that with them? We have a program that takes people through identifying their values and their vision. So we go with our 10 year values, our three year vision and our one year vision, because your values and vision drive every decision, mm -hmm. including your healthy habits and including what you're going to do first thing in the morning. But for most entrepreneurs, generally it's going to be some sort of some form of sales or marketing activity that needs to be done first thing in the morning, writing a sales letter, writing a video script, um, it could be doing a presentation. It could be working on their own sales skills. It could be writing a book chapter. It could be writing an email series. It could be any of these things that, yeah, it doesn't have to be done today, but it's really important. And the thing is, is they, most people get up and get into communication immediately. So they're doing their social media and they're doing their email and that's urgent, but important as Stephen Covey talks about, but it's really that you have to spend that time on non-urgent important money later mm -hmm. activities. Writing that sales letter will not bring you money today, but it will bring you money for 12 to 36 months if you run the right traffic. That's 100%, man. It's focus on the things that are not urgent, but are important. And, uh, and I think that's the, the point that you make at the very end there is something that I've always um, subconsciously, I think, done. And I actually had a conversation with a mastermind group that I'm in today, this afternoon, um, about that, that exact topic of um, you know, taking on short, like it's, it's easy to make money today. Like you can focus on money today, but then you're not building wealth long-term. Right. And if you, if you can delay gratification and you can uh, set yourself self up for future revenue, for future money, for future gain and whatever it is, could be health, could be relationships, could be financially. Um, like it compounds, right? It's worth so much more in the future if you if you do those activities. Um, yeah, I think times, people are doing money now activities. Is that money now? Money later activities are like linearly going up, and money now activities like okay. So let's say you only get up and you you only send an email out to your list, but you're not doing anything to grow your list. You're not doing the hard work of strategy. Well, eventually that list will degrade. And the amount of money you make from the same activity today will be much lower in 90 days from now. So that's why you always have to be doing this growth type of business. I, I use this quick phrase. Like if somebody wants to know what they should be doing first thing in the morning, I say drumming up business. You've got to be drumming up business. And that means either looking for leads or, or deals or whatever it is. Or put, but really it's putting together the strategy for it. It's not making the calls. Obviously, mm -hmm. most people, if you're in the real estate world and you're up at six o'clock doing this. Nobody wants to take your call at six o'clock in the morning, except for other people like you. But <laughs> most people are going to, 
are not going to want to take the call for another four or five hours, but you can be doing the planning and preparation. You can be scripting out the webinar or the weekly Zoom Q&A that you do so that it will lead to the sale. You can be practicing your sales pitch. You can be doing all of those things. That's what you have to be doing in those magic morning minutes. Love that, man. I love that. It's kind of like money today is like an addition, right? Money tomorrow activities are like multiplication or even Absolutely. You know, exponential factors. That's good Absolutely. stuff, man. Um, so so uh, wh what does your perfect day look like? Tell me about what your schedule looks like, what your day looks like. How do you, um, how do you schedule your day out? So I get up at 3.57 a.m. every day. I immediately will drink a lot of water and then I will do a short 10 minute meditation. Then I'll take my dog out. And then by 4.30, I am working uh, 90 minutes on money later activities, often writing Facebook ads or sales copy for our current courses or scripting out videos. And at six o'clock, I start preparing for a meeting and I have breakfast. I have a meeting at seven o'clock in the morning because my team is on Eastern Standard Time. I'm on Pacific Standard Time. They all need to do the meeting because we have to get our Facebook ads up before noon Eastern. So then we have that meeting. Then I go to the dog park and um, hang out with my girlfriend till about nine o'clock in the morning. And then after that, I do another 60 to 90 minute block of, of work. And then I do my workout then I have lunch and then in the afternoon I do calls and podcasts like this one. And then I'm done at about five o'clock and you know, with the hour and a half break in the morning and then about an hour and a half break at lunchtime, I'm really working about eight or nine hours. So it just seems mm -hmm. like a long day. And then we have dinner pretty early, you know, generally around five 30 and then another dog walk. And then we watch uh, right now we're watching one episode of modern family, which is a pretty goofy <laughs> show. And that's it, just one episode, and then we kind of wind down. We talk a lot, so we just sit there and talk, and then we get to bed pretty early, usually asleep by 8.30, um, usually in bed around 8 or 8.15. So that's my day, and that's it five days a week. Then Saturday, I do everything up until the, the dog park, and then after that, it's free time. And the same with Sunday, is I, I still do the morning stuff. Uh, up until the dog park. How do you, um, I, I love the amount of discipline that's in that, right? How do you- It's all ritual and routine because I'm not a disciplined very, person. I'm a very lazy, unmotivated, undisciplined <laughs> person who has, built, who has built fences around himself so that he doesn't do any of the undisciplined, lazy, mo unmotivated things. Talk about that. Talk Because I, I think it's, you know, a lot of people think they have to add all these things on in order to right, be you got to have cold think, showers and ice baths and you got to <laughs> yeah, have Jocko just, yelling in your head. Oh, no, you don't. No, you don't. Listen, <laughs> I think why, why, why you need to subtract way? things, right? right. Subtract it. So how, how do you build those fences around your, your life? Well, first of all, you hang around people who have already built those fences around them. You know, you hang around people. You want to be a commercial real estate investor. You want to be in, you want to be a successful entrepreneur. You got to get in those mastermind groups. As you said, you got to get the coach. You got to, Stop hanging around the people in the environments that pull you down. Now, do you have to stop hanging around your old college buddies? No, you don't have to stop hanging around them. You just have to adjust the activities in which you spend the time with. Um, you know, you can go to the college game or you can go play golf with them, but you can't then continue it on till 9, 10, 11, midnight um, like you did 35 years ago. I mean, that game mm -hmm. is just over and you have to remove yourself from those things. And I did that for a long time too. I was a huge binge drinker. And, you know, a lot of my friends still to this day, still to this day, go to the same bars on Friday and Saturday night. And, you know, they're in horrible shape, you know, some of them, not a, not a lot of them, but, you know, some of my old friends are in horrible shape and, you know, not very happy with things. And it's because they, they made very bad decisions for the long, long time. Now I have, you know, very strong friends who push me to the next level, like this guy, Pedro Skoulian. And, my friend, Joel Marion, these guys are all worth a lot of money. They're all the most generous guys that I know. They have amazing families, amazing marriages, amazing children. And listen, these people are out there. You just have to go. And when you get the opportunity to be with these people, you have to play up to their level. So that's one of the most important things. Then you just need to do a lot of introspection and self-reflection. What the heck is my ball and chain? What is holding me down? Well, is it alcohol? Is it food? Is it television? Is it pornography or whatever it is? You got to just block it and you can, you can find a way to block all of these things from your life. You know, don't have any alcohol in the house 
or mm -hmm. get public accountability and say a lot like for example a lot of people who are hung up on social media you, you could say to a friend listen if you find me liking or commenting on something after seven o'clock at night i'll give you twenty dollars that will change your behavior pretty quick because nobody likes to do that and I've done everything from I quit swearing in 2011 in five days by telling my email list of 150,000 people is going to stop swearing. And you just do. Otherwise, you're a hypocrite and nobody wants to feel like a hypocrite. It's, it's worse than being a purse snatcher in society's eyes. You're right. You're right. So you hang out with a lot of um, very successful people. You, you mentioned Vedros and, and um, some of these other folks. And... Uh, what have you found? I know you interview a lot of these guys and you um, hang out in these circles. What have you found is the catalyst that's taken their business from good, uh, you know, maybe doing seven figures a year to doing eight, nine, even 10 figures a year? What's that catalyst that kind of takes them from good to great? Well, the first thing is sales, right? So you have to have an amazing offer and you have to be able to have a system where you can sell repeatedly. So whether it's Bedros with Fit Body Bootcamp where they had you know, 500 franchisees and 800 franchises, you know, that he built a sales team of young people by just giving them the scripts and then doing a lot of training with them. With Joel, he, uh, Joel Marion, he runs a company called Biotrust, which is a hundred million dollar a year supplement company. And they, they make most of their sales through internet marketing. So video sales letters, email marketing, that sort of stuff, which Joel has mastered. Then after you have sold you have to become a great leader so that you can lead other people to come into those positions and keep the machine going. Because essentially what you're doing is building a factory and any factory that works has to have a, you know, kind of a process and something that nobody else can do, which is the sales. And then it needs to have the system so that, you know, you can kind of have replaceable people so that, you know, if you come in, you get the training and you do the job right, you're going to stay. If you come in, you can't do the training, you have a bad attitude and we can't fix it then you're going to have to move on, but you're going to become the greatest leader that you can so that you do everything you can to recruit, train, and hire the right people, keep the right people, build the right culture. And that's very important in this day and age. Oh my goodness, is that ever important? And then, you know, from that, on terms of the personal size, you have to have the rituals and routines and the self-discipline. You have to be able to lead yourself, as Pedro says in his book, Man Up. Uh, you know, he talks about the five stages of leadership and leading yourself is the first stage. If you can't lead yourself, you can't lead other people. And then I think a missing component that people don't understand is that most of the wealthiest, um, if you call them American dream or self, you know, quote unquote, self-made entrepreneurs, they're the most generous people that I know. And really the only people who are more generous than me are richer than me. And, you know, I don't think that it's a coincidence. I think there's a huge component to this, their success. So those are all the things you need, need to have in place to go from seven to eight and eight to nine. I don't know. I haven't helped anybody go from nine to 10 yet. 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 It's, mm. it's on its way, brother. So I, I love what you just said about focusing on revenue generating activities. I think that's a big deal. Sales and marketing. I think you always get a return on your investment when you invest more into that. And I think revenue solves all problems, right? Like, Hey, I need somebody to run this. Hey, go make more money. And then you can afford to hire that person. Then we start hiring people, start building out the team, start becoming a better leader um, or, and bringing in people to be better leaders in your organization. That's another return on investment is people. Um, I think a lot of, a lot of entrepreneurs see people as an expense on their, on their, uh, income statement and it's it's really a huge return on investment um and then i love what you said about the generosity man um i think that's a big deal of, of showing gratitude and and you know you don't really just you don't just get what you give you get many more times than what you give um, absolutely absolutely and it's very overlooked in this day and age like people man it's a crazy world out there and people don't understand how generous a lot of successful people are so that's something very important to understand. But you know, it's, it's not just generosity in money, it's generosity in opportunity that is given to people. And you know, really great entrepreneurs who are really great leaders are giving a lot of people a really great opportunity. And the opportunity is to go and give their families a really great life, with, which then gives them a really great future. So it's just being an entrepreneur and a, and a good leader is one of the most generous things that anybody can do in society. Love that, man. We, we always need more leaders, man. The world can always use another great leader. Yeah, absolutely. So, so tell me, 
how how have, has your business been affected by the whole COVID-19 situation and some of the other entrepreneurs that you, you hang out with? What are they doing in order to make sure that um, not only are they able to kind of keep their head above water, but thrive during these times? Yeah, so I have had, um, you know, my coaching clients have had almost all of the gamuts. I didn't have a lot of people in the restaurant world in my coaching business, so that was probably the hardest hit. I do have a lot of gym owners in my coaching business, and they have done a remarkable remarkable job of staying safe and in terms of their business and not going under mm -hmm. and transitioning. Oh my God, I own three gyms myself and we have gone so hardcore on the online side of things that it kept the business going. We found new uh, revenue streams like supplements and all that sort of stuff. So I'm amazed at what gym owners who committed to, you know, seeing this through have done. Now I think there's a long road to go and it's going to be tough but gym owners have really, really impressed me. But, you know, it's not really surprising if, you know, because they're going to be fit, they're going to be leaders, they're, you know, because that kind of comes part and parcel with be a gym owner. Like you got, sure. if you're going to be training people, you're going to be leading people. So they've done a great job. On the other hand, um, online coaches, supplement business owners, oh my gosh, these guys are having record years, record breaking years this year. So I have a lot of clients who are having their best year ever. And, you know, like my friend Joel, um, and then in my business, we've grown, but we've more importantly become more profitable because we aren't doing live events. And mm -hmm. what we found is that people love virtual events. They don't have to travel. We can actually bring on better speakers, even better speakers, because we don't have to organize around their, their travel schedule. Mm -hmm. And they, they don't cost, you know, $25,000 to have at your event um, virtually. They're, they're, you know, most of them are willing to do it. And so we've replicated the experience of the live event without the massive costs of live events. So even if we didn't grow our business, which we were fortunately able to do, we would be more profitable even still at the same revenue. So it's been, um, it hasn't been easy and I've had to, you know, really take on a lot of pain from other people and guide them through. And, you know, a lot of people were scared and that sort of stuff. But at the end of the day that, you know, there's no other option to, other than to keep going. You're not going to quit. And so I've been, you know, helping people become lion leaders through this time. And it's really paid off for a lot of them. I'm super impressed and I've learned a lot from them. Uh, that's for sure. So it's been a huge learning year. Love it, man. I love it. Yeah. I think, um, I think a lot of people, you know, they're like, Oh, what are we going to do? Well, humans are pretty resilient, right? If their backs against the wall and it's either die or succeed, we tend to succeed, you know, we tend to push through, we tend to figure it out, we tend to find a way and, um, uh, you know, and reach new heights that we didn't even know that we were capable of. So yeah, a lot of people were just scared at the start, but yeah, you know, for once, sure. they, once they kind of went, Oh yeah, you're right. Like what else am I going to do? Then they mm -hmm. just got them on board and away we go. And you're going to get that with any, any sort of uncertainty. So a hundred percent, man. All right. Last question. What is the, uh, you're in a lot of very high net worth circles, very influential circles. You're getting great advice all the time. What is the best piece of advice you've ever received? Um, I would say get a coach or a mentor. I wish I would have done that three years earlier. I didn't get one until 2006, right around when I had the anxiety attacks. I could afford it in 2003. And I just think like, you know, if you look at it as like building a house or building like, you know, the pyramids in Egypt, if you only built a small base, you couldn't build a high pyramid. And it's the same with coaching or mentoring. The earlier you get it, the more of a, a base that you build so that you're able to build higher and higher and higher. So that's what I, that's what I got advice from. It was always have coaches and I wish I would have put that in place earlier. hundred percent, man. I agree hundred percent from business standpoint, mentorship masterminds have taken my business from a, you know, solid growth trajectory to just skyrocketing it. So it's been a game changer for me. So awesome, man. Well, I appreciate you so much. Thank you so much for being here. Um, why don't you share, you know, uh, what's the best way for people to connect with you? I'll make sure that, that uh, I connect with you and, and tag you on social media and get all your social media handles in here as well. But what's the best way for people to connect with you, Craig? So, so real Craig Valentine on Instagram and then over at craigvalentine.com or get my first book at freeperfectdaybook.com or even just email me at craig at godfather.com. That will work. Love it, man. Dude, thank you so much. Always bringing a ton of value. And I uh, look up to you, man. You're, you're a, a rock star in the space. So thank you so much for uh, sharing the, some value with my crew. Oh, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. All right, take care.
Stop.